Welcome to another episode of Everybody's Got Something. I'm your host, Seth Hoffman. Our guests today, Jonathan Wolf, Mary Stockton, and Lara Manzanares. Let's get ready for a good time with some local treasures. Let's get into it. Well, I'm so blessed to be here with such wonderful, inspiring people. I'm so thankful to get to have the opportunity to learn from these amazing people. Today, our first guest is the fractal man himself, Jonathan Wolf. Jonathan, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank I'm you so, so much. And you're looking uh, every time you impress me more and more with your uh, beautiful attire. Well, thank you. Um, so what might seem obvious to some, maybe you can start off with just explaining what is a fractal? Because I know it's a, a word people hear sure. and they know it's cool, but what exactly is a fractal? Man? Sure. A fractal is a never-ending pattern. It's a shape that goes on and on. It's made of little copies of itself. And we can make fractals with mathematics, with algebra or geometry, but we can also find fractals in nature. So patterns that re reoccur over and over again at different sizes, like trees and rivers and lightning bolts, things that branch or things that spiral. I ah, love okay. spirals. Yes. So nature yes. is full of fractal patterns. Yes, and how did you uh, first uh, you know, come upon fractals and become enamored with them? Well, it's a fun story. I discovered fractals when I was in high school at the Albuquerque Academy way back when, and um, I started doodling them on graph paper. You could just draw fractals. You don't even need computers. And did you know what a and, fractal was, well, or you were just drawing and someone said, hey, nice fractal? No, or? a very good friend of mine showed me. He introduced me to the concept. They'd actually only been discovered um, a little bit before that, so it's kind of a brand new form of mathematics. Okay. Um, and then I came across this uh, back in the late 80s when I was in high school, and I fell in love with it. It's like, wow, it's set the spark going that's just been growing and growing. And then later I got a computer and started making computer generated fractals. And eventually I started this uh, nonprofit called the Fractal Foundation to inspire interest in science, math, and art um, using fractals. Okay, and I'm curious because um, the idea of the Fractal Foundation from the very moment that idea came to you to when it came a reality. Because um, many people have a, a dream or a cool idea, but the magic is when you can take that and bring it to a real thing in the world. Can you just tell us, how, how do you take the idea and make it a reality? Oh, that is such a great question, Seth. And one of the most satisfying things that I know is taking ideas out of your head and putting them into the world. And often it takes a lot of patience. It yes. takes perseverance, persistence, not giving up. These are some of the lessons that I've learned through making fractals. Um, so... I just kept doing what I loved, right? Mm -hmm. Just talking about it, sharing it, teaching fractals to people. And it just kind of unfolded almost by this, I don't want to say accident, I, I like to call it fractal fate, right? Mm -hmm. Life just brought me into this place because I kept doing what I'm passionate about. And so one day I was um, flying my balloon, so I'm a fractal balloon artist, and I landed in a field and my crew wasn't there, but this woman came running to help me land and said, oh my God, I love your balloon, this is incredible. And so she became part of the crew. I kept, you know, I was teaching, telling her about fractals and yeah. then she invited me to come to her kindergarten classroom to teach her kids about fractals. Wow, so that was and kind of the birth of the teaching about fractals. Because I just, I love telling people yeah. and teaching people about fractals. Yeah. So she invited me there yes. and the next year she invited me back and then she gave me $50 as a gift. And then that? she started telling her teacher friends about it and they started inviting me into their classrooms and they started giving me money to do this thing that I love wow. doing. So eventually we decided, oh, there's an opportunity, let's incorporate a nonprofit, create a, an organization with a mission to really spread this broadly. Wow. And now we've taught over 100,000 people about fractals. 100,000 yeah, people. Really wow. exciting. Wow, incredible, yeah. incredible. And um, do you, and is so far just in uh, Albuquerque and no, all over New Mexico actually, or beyond? Beyond, that's a great question. It started here in Albuquerque. This is what I like to call the, Albuquerque is the fractal capital of the world. It's nice. the epicenter of the fractal revolution. Uh -huh. But now we teach all over the, the, well, all over New Mexico. I've taught in many different parts of the US and I've taught fractals internationally as far away as India, and we have these international um, programs, we call them fractivities, the uh -huh. things people can participate in. Uh, so we have, for example, um, the Fractal Triangulathon, where we make little fractal triangles, we teach yes. kids how to do these, we put them together in bigger and bigger copies of the same yes. shape. We filled the entire Albuquerque Convention Center with fractals made from kids 
as far away as Australia, India, uh, Okay, Japan. so they did them and they sent them all and in. I, I, I often get packets in the mail from wow. teachers all over the world saying, here's our fractals, please contribute. Um, be, we want to be part of this phenomenon. Incredible. It's really incredible. Exciting. So you spend a lot of your time with fractals, teaching fractals, and you mentioned you also do some ballooning and not just ordinary balloons, some very uh, special balloons. I wonder if you could uh, tell us how, one, maybe how the fractals connect with the balloons and then just how that world sure. began. Okay, so I grew up in Albuquerque and uh, so I've always loved balloons. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I didn't know I was going to be a pilot until while well, I was in graduate school and a funny thing happened. I was teaching one of my students uh, neurobiology. But really, what I learned was how to tie-dye, because he was wearing all these beautiful tie-dyes, and we became friends. He taught me way more than I ever taught wow. him. And so we started making tie-dyed tapestries together that were very fractal-inspired. One day, one night, late at night, we were tie-dyeing, and we had this inspiration. Oh, my God, we could tie-dye a hot air balloon. And this is before you'd ever considered or fathomed? I was and not, had you even ridden I'd in I'd never that? flown in a balloon. I was not a pilot. I just... Knew about balloons, balloons are cool, That's and cool. I liked art. I like big art, and fractals transcend scale. And I said, "Oh my God, I want to put fractal. I want to put tie-dyed fractals on a balloon." And when you thought that at that moment, did you in that moment think, "I think this will really happen," or did party think, "Oh, this is just a no, crazy it was, idea"? It was inevitable. I knew it was going to happen. Okay, I had well, absolute powerful, confidence. Powerful. Uh, it took a lot of work. Yeah. I spent years learning how to do it. I did an apprenticeship with a balloon builder. I went and studied with another balloon maker. It's not just something you take lightly. Sure. You, you, you know, you, yeah, a nice one. Uh, <laughs> but you have to do it seriously yeah, and yeah. impeccably. So I learned how to sew. I learned how to weave the basket. And then I learned, and none of these things you had experience no, with prior. But I was on fire with the idea, passionate. So, it, it so I'm hearing a theme that when you're passionate and excited about something, that's the direction to follow. Exactly, good lessons. And mm -hmm. it's taken me so many interesting places. I've flown all over the country. I've flown in, um, in Europe, I've flown in, in Switzerland, in the Czech Republic, and I'm eager to go fly in Canada. I've flown in Mexico, uh, amazing adventures, so much fun. Every time we fly, we meet new people. Uh, yeah. it's, it's an adventure in chaos theory, is what yes. I like to say, right? Yes. The more you understand about the the complex dynamics of the atmosphere, the more power and control you have to steer where you want to go. But still, you're always landing somewhere and different. And tell us a little bit about that chaos theory you mentioned. Sure, yeah. Uh, the atmosphere is a chaotic system, okay. but really most of what we experience in nature is an example of chaos theory. Mm -hmm. And this is such an important lesson, right? At the Fractal Foundation, we like to focus on fractals. But really what we're teaching are the underlying lessons of chaos theory and complexity, because that's how nature works. Fractals are the visual representation of complex, chaotic, dynamic systems. Those all sound really abstract and weird and stuff, right? You do not have to be a PhD neuroscientist or whatever to understand these things. Yeah. Fractals make them accessible and interesting. And the lessons are powerful. The lessons are that we're all interconnected, mm -hmm. right? And that small differences can lead to big outcome, big changes in the outcome, yes. right? Yes. We call it the butterfly effect. Right. And what I love teaching is what I like to call butterfly power, right? Mm -hmm. It's such an important lesson because there's a lot of frustration yeah. and cynicism and despair. What difference can I make, right? There's eight billion people in the world. I'm just one eight billionth of humanity. Yeah. Can I possibly change anything? Actually, yes. Right? The lesson of the butterfly effect is a butterfly can flap its wings and it impacts the atmosphere. And that impact doesn't just dissipate and fade away. It actually ripples out and impacts other things that impact other things. And that butterfly can actually help cause a hurricane on the other side of the planet 100 years from now. Wow. It actually works that way. You can't prove those connections, right, always, right, right. but they do happen. Yes. And what it teaches you at a social level is that any individual can impact their community around them. And that impact ripples out and can actually change the course of history. Yes. It's fantastically inspiring. So it gives me great hope and optimism because we are infinitely creative. Yeah. And now we have this technology for being infinitely connected. So you have a good idea, you can inspire other people, and suddenly you can broadcast that. And 
people all over the world can join and start doing what you're doing, playing together, creating better ways of doing things together. This is what I like to call fractal power. Yeah, that's. I like that. You know, yeah. it makes me think of how you know people. I think, like you said, tend tend to feel uh, you know insignificant or helpless in this uh, world we're living. But just little things when you're driving, like the most subtle things, when someone either waves you to go ahead or cuts you in front. How much that affects. Uh, the rest of your day and the rest of your interactions and so just thinking how powerful we are it's yeah. it's a uh, I've been playing this fun little powerful. I've been playing this fun little game and it's mm -hmm. been rippling out I try to go for two weeks without complaining or criticizing wow. right how's that it, it's been extraordinary right what it does is I show up like this happy wonderful person to people and it's like that's not my intention it, yeah. but it, it's like people are like Wow, there's something cool going on with him, yeah. and those little changes that that spreads, right? And mm -hmm. it's just so much more fun, satisfying yeah. to live in an empowering context where I'm not just being a victim and complaining. Yeah. It's the guy, he's just like a loser. Yeah. If only it wasn't for those people, I'd yeah. be doing better. It's like yeah. no, it's like be sympathetic, be supportive, be positive and uplifting, and just don't spend your time, waste your energy complaining. Right, because right. you think when you're complaining, it's, yeah. it's not just having an effect on someone else. It's probably, uh, yeah. we suffer from it the most. We so do. how far into the two, are you two weeks in already? Or no, I've been trying this for a few months and I actually haven't made it a full two weeks. What, how far have you gotten? I've gotten about a little over a week, like eight Ooh, or nine That's days. impressive. And I mean, it's really good. It's like flexing a, a muscle that. in your, your soul. Uh, and you it's a really been, good exercise. You inspire me to attempt that. That was my hope. Uh -huh. And maybe others who are watching can I take like on this it. game. And, I, like you know, I like it. It changes the world. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Well, um, in our last uh, couple of minutes here, I wonder if you could just let us know what are some things you are uh, excited about uh, coming up for you. And also just some, you've given us lots of, Usually I save some words of wisdom at the end. You've given us uh, many nuggets of them. Thank you. So maybe if you can just leave us with what, what, what you're excited about and uh, anything, any other closing wisdom you can sure. share. Sure. Well, I'm excited. This is my favorite time of year coming up. The fall, um, New Mexico turns really beautiful. And well, I'm going to Burning Man, which is an amazing art community, temporary civilization up in Nevada, which has inspired me greatly. We do a regional New Mexico Burning Man event um, in July. So that's great opportunity for creative community and self-expression. Yeah. So that's fun. Uh, and then after that comes my very favorite event of the year, Balloon Fiesta. Yes. And I really hope you can join me and yes. bring Shane and your family. Yes. And we fly from launch spot S2 Skydies 2, that's at the northeast side of the field, in Infinitude, the world's most beautiful fractal balloon. Oh, yes. And I'm so excited to get to share that with our people here in New Mexico, but visitors from all over the world. It's a really exciting thing. We also have a First Friday Fractal show yes. that is in the planetarium. And we'll, put, we'll uh, post links and that stuff That is that. a yeah. wonderful opportunity to learn more. It's the first Friday of every month in the Natural History Museum Planetarium. It's an old town here in Albuquerque, and we do it the night before Balloon Fiesta begins. Oh, so that's like a great kickoff for Excellent. the whole week. Excellent. And so I'm really, really excited to get to share what I'm so wow. passionate about. Wow. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for our conversation today and also being just uh, an inspiring person of positivity and passion and fun and knowledge and all these things you bring. And um, a wise man once said to me that great ideas don't happen by keeping them a secret. And that wise man was you, actually. I don't remember. <laughs> so, Jonathan, you are a visionary whose visions really come true. And I thank you for your time. And uh, it's an honor to know you and look forward to all you will do in this world to come. Thank you so much, Seth. All right. We're right back at you thank with all you those fine much. words. All right. We are here with Mary Stockton, who is a vocalist in a number of groups in town over the years. And Mary, it is a pleasure to get to sit down and talk with you and hear about your life making music and to hear some of your philosophies, because I'm an admirer of yours, not just as a performer, but just as a, a person with such a positive vision and with humor. And I'd like to just know uh, what makes you tick Tell me a little bit about your story. Um, 
How did you get into music? Let's just let's just hear about you. All right, let's unload, Seth. Thank All you right. for having me. It's an honor. It's Hi. an honor. Yes. Um, I've always been musical as like a kid, you know, dancing and singing, and um, I was in a few groups as a kid, like just like with a little bit of tap and ballet and singing songs. So you've always been a, a performer, that's something that's yes. been natural for you? Yes, mm -hmm. class clown, all of that, uh -huh. yeah, for uh -huh. sure. Um, and I moved up to Albuquerque when I was 16, and I really didn't start like performing out until I was like in my mid-20s, and I used to work at a bar called Grand Central Station, okay. where I was an alley cat, which was in the karaoke room, and we would put on full like skits, like we learned the in sync dances, wow. the and then we would call people up to do their karaoke, and then we would like every other song, you know, and then we'd also sing backup for them, and I did wow. that for a few years, Very which was cool. a lot of fun, uh -huh. and um, I started singing in a uh, band with no name in like 2012, uh -huh. and we just recently rebanded, so we're back. Okay, yeah, I remember seeing you all back in back yeah. in the day. Yeah, and um, I'm also with uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses right now, which is a funk band. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much all original funk music written by Kevin Cookie Jones. Mm -hmm. We have a gig this Sunday at the Hall, which is a pretty sweet spot. Very, yeah, that's an awesome spot. Yeah, so we'll be there. And then I currently started singing again with Shoulder Voices, which okay. um, it's kind of hard to describe the music. It's like a glam, punk, rock, psychedelic. Um, there's a stuffed animal thing called the Stuffed Animal Band. So, you okay. know, come full stocked with a bunch of stuffed animals and deck out the stage. Wow. And it gets all rowdy sometimes. And there's uh, stuffed animal fights with like the crowd. As just, part of the show. Yeah, just throwing wow. everything. Wow, so it's a full experience. It's a full experience. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. I, I, I'm glad that I'm back singing with those guys. And so what's it like? So with the different groups, do you feel like it's a different part of you that comes out to play? Or oh, is for it, sure. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, like the hip hop and the funk are fairly similar, okay. you know, but like being more of like the hype girl with the hip hop, um, it's just like a little bit different, you know, yes. but um, definitely there's different like pieces of my personality, these personalities uh -huh. <laughs> that come out. And so... Yeah, and I and it's really great medicine. Yeah, um, music is and moving yes. my body and being yes. able to like connect with like um, the audience and also with bandmates and you know. Tell us a little bit about that for folks who have either um, are just getting into a band or are thinking about being in a band. What is what is that like? What makes a band work and function well? Well, I would say like good communication and also like um, personalities. You know, as long as like you guys is. You, you get along in that way, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of like the teamwork that goes with it. It's like you kind of have to like each other too. Yeah, you and, have to like hanging out. Cause yeah, of and, 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 it's, and the, the bigger the band is, the harder is it to schedule like practices sure, and things sure, like sure, that because sure. everybody's got a ton of things going on, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would just say like communication and also you have to like each other. Yes. Yeah, yes, and yes. practice and come home and do your work and go to practice and yeah. our rehearsal and have it done. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's a big part of it. And how does that work? I imagine um, different, you know, there's commonly like a leader of a band and people have the different roles. Of, is it is it kind of like, does it feel like a an a equal team ship or is it kind of like, okay, someone's calling these shots? Or I think how, it kind of just depends because we have, you know, in, in every band, there's the ones just show up and do the work, show up. And that's it. Yeah. And there are ones that are more a part of like um, keeping it a whole and um, doing the promotion and, and all of that, you know. Yes. And so kind of just depends. I've always liked to play like a role in like that and like promoting yeah. and showing up early and helping, you know, because sure. as a vocalist, I just walk in with my mic and my mic stand and I'm yeah. like, I'm ready. <laughs> Watch you go to the drummer. You're not ready. And then everybody yet, else. I know. Are you not ready? Jeez, and I've forever. I've offered to help, but there's yeah. usually a method to the uh, madness, yeah, and true. so like I go true. and try. You know, like mm -mm, don't touch that. But it's nice to offer. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I do offer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who would you say um, are some of your influences as as a singer? Do you have um, some people you, like from when you were younger, even? people today whether they're I, you know I, when I was little I liked the whole because you know I kind of grew up on MTV in the early 80s sure, yeah. you know and so like the ones that were different like uh, Cyndi Lauper um, right. Madonna you know like like that those those gals 
Definitely. And do you remember at a young age thinking, I think I'd like to do this? Well, and also Michael Jackson, you know. Classic. Just like, I, mean, I used to, we would rent the um, the thriller video, yes. like, at least a couple yes. times a month so I could, yes. you know, watch that yes. and practice all the dance moves. That guy can I move still like got no it. I, st I still can do some of those moves. Okay, well, maybe uh, maybe later during the uh, during the song, you can and throw like, in a, a <laughs> yeah. just a little bit. I think yeah. that would fit Stand by Me very, uh, very well. Yeah, I think so. I could do like a spin. Yes, yes. Yeah. So something else I'd like to ask you is because I, you know, know you a bit from social media as, as the world we live in, and um, I know you've had a full life, lots of things, but you just seem to have a very uh, positive attitude through all that's happened. I know life has not been an easy thing, mm -hmm. but the way you take things and you just seem to have a very, uh, I don't know, inspiring outlook. I wonder it's, it's if, like, if, if you can tell us about well, that. Well, for me, you know, it's because I have had a full life of experiences and it's better, not bitter. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do have days of where like I'm uh, you know, but I don't like the way that feels. I don't like the heaviness. So I always yeah. like, you know, look for things that lighten things. If it's like a splash of color here, um, my breathing exercises, moving my body, um, just going out in nature, hanging out with the dogs. The dogs are great. Yeah. Or, like the dogs are also yeah. like, you know, a big part of, yeah. you know, helping things out and just keeping things light because, you know, life goes by in a blink yeah. faster for some, yeah. you know, yeah. so just trying to like stay present and be not necessarily like, ignorantly like positive or sure. any of that you know but there there are different ways of looking at things so just stepping back and adjusting my perspective yeah because i think today really it's helpful. one of the biggest challenges to stay positive and to not give into like the whole divisiveness yeah because i think it's such an easy thing it to, is and to it feeds it that. it feeds it feeds like and then you're just putting more energy into that machine you know so yeah. if you can like step out of that and, and feed the other aspect of like changing your perspective and you know not everything needs your opinion or you know and it's just like yeah take care of yourself take care of your family you know just be present where you can you know because if you just keep on allowing more and more of that negativity and stuff in you just become a walking cloud of not niceness and yeah. that like whole uh, two weeks of not complaining i've tried yeah. that trick before you tried that? How did it i've tried it? it i think i got like three days and then i'm just driving around in the city and that's when my beast comes out because yeah. it's just like oh driving is the real test yeah. it is a test it like is like when you want to turn right and you're in the right turn someone's I was not like what around. all of a sudden now we're doing construction again on this yes. street for the third time this year yeah so that'll be the big test when we get in the car we'll be like a reminder yeah okay. just like pretend that you're somebody else yes yeah yes. and did you have um you know, a, a parent, grandparent, someone in your life who kind of set you with the attitude you have? Um, is that something you came upon I, on I feel your like own? it was a survival like thing that I just came upon myself um, in general. Mm -hmm. Just kind of seeing what doesn't work for people. Yeah. And, and you know, and just practice makes the master. So, yes. you know, it's just like yes. that, keep on practicing, not yeah. complaining, keep on practicing, changing your perspective, you know. We are very little on this big planet. Yeah. You know, our problems seem really huge sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, and life keeps on going. And yeah. it's pretty beautiful. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate what you put out into the world, both musically and just your spirit. Because I, uh, many times, you know, coming across your posts, whatever, I just smile or feel a bit more positive, mm -hmm. which there's so, mo so many things out there are, are not that way. So I really appreciate that. Um, I wonder if you can tell us, uh, with the different groups you're in, what's one thing about each of these groups that uh, is special to you, or something that, that, that's a unique experience for you? Like when you're with, um, you know, with uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses and uh, Band with No Name, like just like a little something that that's you, different a part of you one. that gets to come out, or something you okay. like, or I don't know about uh, the band. I say with the Joneses, um, like vocally, um, it's, it's constantly like learning because mm -hmm. um, like the harmonies and things like that. So it's it's more challenging like yeah. with the um, with them. So I get to like push myself. So I, I like that with the Joneses and bandwidth. Um, it was like kind of like my baby, you yeah. know, because we yeah. started that so long ago. So yeah. it, it feels like home. It's like a homey piece, and sure. I can feel that like. It's like boom, jump in, and yeah, you know. So yeah. I like that about bandwidth and shoulder voices. I just love like the chaos of it because I can just you know just be chaotic and jump around and yeah. make noise and you know it's it's heavy yeah. psychedelic punk wow. kind of stuff yeah. so i like that and yeah. i feel like a whew afterwards 
And are you, are you always, uh, when it's time, show time, are you always like, all right, or do you, do you have to pump yourself up, or just does the energy just take you? And yeah, Like you're all like, I that. might have to fake it for the first part. All or, of or that, it... all of that. It just depends on the day. It depends on what time the show starts. Did mm -hmm. I eat, whatever. Sure. You know, it's, it's, it's all of that. But it's just like, ready or not, here I come. You yeah. know, it's kind of yeah. like my jump into it uh -huh. yeah and it's just trust a lot of trust yeah. that like you yeah. know it's yeah. there and try not yeah. to overthink it yeah yeah well um it's sure an honor to get to talk with you and hear a bit more i wonder if you could just leave us with any uh mary stockton words of wisdom um hmm. i don't know you 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 have an inspirational way of taking all that comes your way and making it a you know a positive thing Let's see, you got me on the spot. I'm not good at that. <laughs> or it could be a words of wisdom that someone shared with you, maybe oh. when you were at a, t a time in your life. Huh. I mean, it sounds like doing what you love yeah, is a, is a good like, recipe. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it's just it's, no pressure. Oh, a good laugh. Wait, laughter and sleep are the best medicine. Okay, yeah, there laughter we go. and sleep. Excellent. The best medicine. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. That's yep. a good one. Okay, yep. okay. All right, well, uh, we'll... Uh, when we post this video, we'll post uh, where your upcoming gigs are so okay. people can come check you out. But I just want to thank you for what you put out into the world. As Jonathan was saying that we, uh, you know, as a butterfly flaps their yeah. wings. And I don't even know if you realize how much uh, you, you add to the world. Mariposa loca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, there yep. you go. You're providing, you're providing the best medicine right here. So Mary Stockton, thank you so much. It's thank an you, honor Seth. to know you. I look forward to hearing and seeing you much more over the years and bless all you do. Thank you, sir. Thank all you. Right. All right. All right. Take care. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only I will see no I won't be afraid oh I won't be afraid just as long as you stand stand by me so darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand, stand by me, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble here far or the mountain, to crumble to the sea I won't cry I won't cry Oh, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stand Stand by me And darling, darling Stand by me Oh, stand by me, oh stand, stand by me, stand by me. Stand by me, stand by 
me We are here with Lara Manzanares. Lara, it's a pleasure to uh, be here with you. I've been a fan of following your music over the years, and I look forward to hearing a little bit about your story, uh, what inspires you, your hand weaving. Um, tell, tell us first off, for those who don't know you, a little bit about wh where you're from, how you got into music. Um, thank you, Seth. It's great to be here. Um, I'm from uh, the Tierra Maria area mm -hmm. of northern New Mexico. It's up near Chama, if you're unfamiliar. I grew up on a sheep ranch. My parents are sheep ranchers and, um, and hand weavers. Uh, if you've heard of a business called Tierra Wools up, up north, um, that's my family. That's us. So I grew up out on the ranch um, weaving during summer breaks, that kind of thing, and then uh, taking music lessons with a fellow named J.K. Brown out in Bloomfield, New Mexico. He was sort of an old bluegrass guy. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, oh yeah, I did piano also before that. Okay, started so that was playing your first the piano. Instrument? Yeah, started uh -huh. playing the piano when I was about four years old. And uh, so music has just always sort of been part of my and life. And when you played piano, was it, um did you, uh, do, were you singing back then as well? No, was it it was, okay. I didn't start singing until high school. Is that I right? Think. Well, mm -hmm. I always wanted to sing. I was yeah. always singing my own little songs sure. to myself, yeah. but singing in public, like that's a different thing. Sure, um, sure. I was very quiet in school and very self-conscious. And um, yeah, my guitar teacher and my grandma kept trying to convince me to sing uh, once I started learning guitar. Did you come from a family of singers? Is it something, no. or just figured, oh, guitar, so you should sing too? Uh, no, didn't come from a family of singers, just a family of ranchers. Uh -huh. um, so if, if people in my family didn't just like break out into song. Like, yeah. I've, I've seen interviews yeah. with people sure, where they're sure. like, oh, my whole family yeah. sings, and we, we all get together and time. sing, yeah. and it's yeah. like, oh man, that would have been so yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, no, I've, I've, I always had my little songs going, and it wasn't until high school that I actually started to sing in public. I started singing at farmer's markets. I sang with, at the... With your guitar? Uh, with my guitar. I started busking. Um, my first one was the Los Ranchos market. Wow. Um, so I was super shy, but once I started singing, people started putting dollar bills in my case, right? And I, I, I couldn't look. I was uh -huh. just, like, singing my song uh -huh. and, like... <laughs> At the end, like, and then at the end, at the end, I looked at my guitar case, and there was a bunch of dollar bills. It was like fifty dollars or something. Wow. In the end, it and I was yeah, bad, and I, I was mean. like, okay, I, maybe I could do this. You and know? so I'm curious. So from going to not singing in public to doing that, was that a big thing to kind of push yourself out of the nest and say, all right, I'm going to do this? It was a big thing, and you know, it was sort of a sort of a like I really wanted to sing but I was afraid to and mm -hmm. so I like, would I you did sing would you sing on your own in your room comfortably or even that was on yeah yeah so it was just the on idea of, of it was doing just this the idea in a public of, place. of performing you know and yeah. being really vulnerable in that way yeah. um, which I did sort of dip my toe into performing before that I think by being a weaver which doesn't seem like it would be yeah. connected but it yeah. but it is I think because Growing up, when I was first learning how to weave in mm -hmm. at Tierra Wools, the hand weaving workshop, I was sort of a little miniature apprentice to the weavers. And they had a showroom where all the weavings were being sold. And then they had the workroom, the workshop in the back. And they had a, a smaller loom out front in the, in the window of the, wow. of the shop. So it sort of fit into the showroom. It's like a performance kind so of So it was like a performance. I'd be, mm -hmm. the, they'd have the kid weaving on the smaller loom and um, people would come into the shop and like that was the first uh, exhibit, I guess, yeah. <laughs> that they saw. So I learned how to, how to perform. I wasn't singing, but I, I think that I was able to sort of get used to people watching sure, me do sure, something sure. Yeah, and sort of yeah. being in that space of yeah. performance. And I think that helped later on when I did yeah. actually start playing. And um, do you ever combine the two? I mean, not like you show up at a gig with your you know, weaving, but I mean, when you're, even if people aren't around, do you find yourself singing while weaving? Well, when I, yeah, when I weave, um, 
the, yeah, it's it's like you get into a flow state, right? Mm -hmm. It's any kind of sort of way that you're working with your hands. And so there's a sort of meditative thing happening. And I, yeah, I find myself humming, not usually like full on singing because that requires more focus just sure. on the body, sure. but getting songwriting ideas or things sort of like melding together and without me realizing it unconsciously. And, yeah. and so it's, it's really nice to have that grounding yeah. uh, of weaving and working with my hands along with the performing and songwriting. And I can like go between the two and Interesting. Go inside and weave together, And who would have thought those two worlds are? Not, when you're telling me about it, I, I see the connection so clearly. But you wouldn't have thought that just uh, right. off the bat. Right. Right. Well, it's very rhythmic, also. Ah. You know, I I did do one show right before everything shut down. It was a couple of days before everything shut down at the outpost here in Albuquerque, where yeah. um, where we brought. The small, the same small loom I used to be on as a kid. We wow. brought that on stage and like Incredible. I did this weaving performance thing. Uh -huh. and, and do you have like a website or something audience. where people can see any? Are there any like videos or clips of some of these that people sure. can see? Sure. I mean, my website is just my name, laramonsonatis.com. Okay. And then there's social media as well. Okay. Um, so from there they can, they can find that. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I know that. over the, over the years I've seen some of those things. I wish uh, I would love for people to see that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so from going to this first time playing at this market, to over the years you've played many many uh, venues. Um, you've been recognized for your songwriting. Um, I wonder if you can share some of I don't know accomplishments or recognition. Some because there's been some exciting things that have happened over the years. I wonder if you could tell us about. Well. To be honest, I think the most exciting thing for me is that I am now comfortable singing in front of my family. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Which is, it was funny when I started busking, that was a lot easier than singing in front of people that I knew. Same, um, I have the same, so, same yeah. exact. I so totally it's just been in the last few years that, that I'm right? like, I feel like I've finally sort of taken on the like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a songwriter. This and is who this I am. This is who I am. Yeah. And, and, I can sing in front of my family. Yeah, this is like breathing. <laughs> and, this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's big for me. Um, and then accomplishments. I think just existing in the space is also a, a, a yeah. quite an accomplishment and continuing to work when life is just kind of throwing stuff at you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I won a couple of awards at the New Mexico Music Awards mm -hmm. a few years ago with mm -hmm. my last album. Um, I don't know, I guess during the pandemic I was invited to, to perform for the Kennedy Center's uh, deal that they were doing where yeah. they were doing videos yeah. in each state, so yeah. I got to do that. Um, I got to go to the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering and sort of be one of the musicians and poets representing New Mexico. So oh. that was really cool. Um, I've gone twice and have been invited back for the next one. Very cool. Um, and I'm working on another album, finally. Uh -huh. So, yeah. And these are all working. original songs? Yes. Okay. All and um, songs. What, what do you have uh, certain themes you tend to write about? Is it all over? What are, mm. what's, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your songwriting process. Like what inspires a song? How do you... How do you take it from the idea to something that you can then perform? Right. Um, I don't think I can just, there's not one answer because every song is a little bit different. There are certain songs that are very much inspired by my personal journey. Uh, you know, songs about pain or heartbreak or, um, you know, kind of the usual things that yeah. people write about. Uh, but then I also take inspiration from my surroundings. Um, uh, I have a song that I sing that's about, uh, it's not about turquoise, it's written from the perspective of a piece of turquoise. Oh. Um, so, and that's the one I'm going to perform okay, for you today. Okay, great, great. Uh, and then there are other songs that sort of come through me. I don't know, you probably have had that experience mm -hmm. as well. Sometimes you workshop a song, um, like I have a song about Albuquerque that someone asked me to write, yeah. you know, and I said, okay, I'm gonna workshop it, and sure. crumple the papers, throw sure. them in the yeah. trash can, yeah. all that. Yeah. And I'm happy with com what came out in the end. Yeah. But then there are other songs that just sort of, 
I'm writing about these people and I'm like, I don't know who this is. Wow. It's, um, I'm telling this story that I don't really know who these folks are, but it feels like something sort of coming through me. So, yeah. yeah, so. That's a pretty special thing when that happens. Cause I know some songs, like you say, it's like kind of like a craft. You're like, okay, I can do this. And then some songs, they just sort of land. Right. And, and just okay. sometimes it's uncomfortable too. Sometimes yeah. you're just like, oh, what? I, like this feels like someone else's thing, or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, and do you believe how do you, where do you think does that play a role as far as like spirituality or the you know are you a spiritual or religious? Is that is that been a part of your life at all? Definitely, I would consider myself to be quite a spiritual person. I guess you could say, and and for me, part of that is just remaining open, remaining open to. To the elements that are surrounding us, to the earth, yeah. the land, the water, the sky, um, any ancestors that are, I think they're still here. I think yeah. they're still with us, you know, either well. watching over us or just kind of still here, but in a way that we maybe yes. can't see them with our eyes. Well, um, and I think that kind of comes through in my music too, mm -hmm. I hope. Well, before we um, hear your song, is there uh, any uh, people either living in this world or with us in other ways that have been an especially big influence on you, either as a songwriter or just in a person, how you face the world? Well, gosh, I have to say my grandparents, for sure. My parents, of course, who are still around, um, but my Grandma Vera and Grandpa Richard, they were very big um, I don't want to say music fans per se because they didn't like go to concerts or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. They, they, they lived out on the ranch they, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, they showed interest. My grandma, she's the one that said, you know, we're going to take these wild ranch kids and we're going to take them to music lessons and we're going to, yeah. you know, she took us to the dentist and wow. or the orthodontist and she kind of like yeah. um, took on a lot of that and and she played the fiddle and one of the reasons I learned to play the guitar was so that I could accompany her on right? her fiddle. Wow. Um, and my grandpa Richard also, he, he, he played a little bit of guitar and he really enjoyed singing like the old West kind of songs mm -hmm. that told a story about like sure. little Joe the Wrangler is this, yeah. he's a kid that got trampled in a stampede. But the story, you know, the stories in the song, it's, yeah. it's really a beautiful song. Yeah. Or El Hijo Desobediente, he shared some corridos with me. Yeah. And um, so that was, that was probably, probably the biggest so influence. Richard and Vera. Yeah, so your parents Richard were, of course, and Richard and Vera. Richard and Vera. I know and you're then, with us. And then on, my, on the other side of my family, my great-grandfather, Luterio Martinez, he was a piano player, and he, he would play at dances and stuff in northern New Mexico. And, and I was really young. Um, when he was still playing, you know, they, there was quite an age gap, yeah. but I think probably my earliest memories of live music were of him playing La Varsoviana and other sort of traditional New Mexican mm. tunes. Beautiful. So. Well, what memories to be a part of you and to get to come out in your songs and mm -hmm. you honor them in, uh, in, in what you're doing. I'm sure they're, they're very proud of you. Mm -hmm. And so tell us the, the name of the song we're, we're going to hear. This song is called Yo Soy De Ti which if if you don't speak spanish uh it, it sort of means i am i am of you or i am you or we, we are the same yeah. thing yeah, yeah. okay all right well uh lara thank you so much it's been an honor to get to sit down and uh, hear a bit more of your story and chat with you and looking forward to hearing your song so Great. thank you so much and uh check check her out all the wonderful things she's doing all right De la tierra colorada donde nacen las mesas por 
volando de sueño en sueño regalando promesas en tus manos vida mía soy un rayo solar en tu cuello mi amor tu lindo palpita yo soy de ti I come from the red dirt land where the mesas are born In the depths of slumber, your wildest dreams I adore In your hands, my dear, I am a ray of sun your breast, my love, your heart beats so warm, yo soy de ti, ah, yo soy de ti, ah, 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 Yo te enseño tu destino Te regalo gracia, misterio y pasión El matiz de dignidad guiará el corazón Yo soy de ti ah, Yo soy de ti Step by step, I guide your travels. I give you strength when your soul unravels. I come with grace, mystery, and passion. The hue of dignity never goes out of fashion. Yo soy de ti. Yo soy de ti Yo soy de ti My turquoise heart